Hi everyone, it's Natalie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the books that I read in May. We all know here that I'm always talking about how behind I am on my recent reads, so let's just move on. Let's just start talking about books. So the first book I'm going to be talking about is Miss Meteor by Anna Marie McLemore and Taylor K. Mejia. This is a magical realism novel where one of our protagonists really wants to participate in her town's pageant and she wants to do this because she is slowly turning into stardust and so she wants to have this opportunity to do this thing she's always wanted to do before she basically dies because she has turned into stardust and so she gets the help of her estranged best friend they had a falling out a while back and so they haven't really been talking to one another but she really feels like she needs her ex-best friend's help basically. So yeah, Lita gets Cheeky's help to participate in the pageant. So I rated this 3.5 stars. It was good but at the same time I feel like it could have been much much better. I have read books by both of these authors before and I thought this was going to be you know a no-brainer that I would just adore it from beginning to end but that just didn't happen exactly. I kind of I saw some flaws mainly I thought that it was longer than it needed to be like a good amount of pages like about a hundred pages could have been edited out of this like they really weren't necessary and they were just taking away from the story honestly but I still actually enjoyed some of the characters and the story overall like the love interests of Lita and Chiki were very very cute I think their names were Cole and man what was his name but the point is the love interests were cute they were really really sweet nice boys and so I like that and then Chiki and Lita were kind of annoying at times because they both had very similar character flaws only in the sense that they were both basically like oblivious idiots like Cheeky was convinced that if she came out everyone would hate her for no fucking reason and Lita was convinced that no one needed her no one really wanted her around and so she's just like taking up too much space and so if she disappears no one's gonna give a shit so it was just a little bit like could they have been a little bit more different please just please a little bit but regardless, I absolutely don't regret having read this. I do still think it's cute. Uh, the other thing is that because the pageant element was like really sold, you know, to promote this book, I actually felt unsatisfied with it because I was expecting something way more cheesy and like fun, but it wasn't really that. The authors really didn't, you know, take full advantage of the pageant stuff to really just have a lot of fun with it. So it was, it was just okay. I guess like my, my point is that this was okay and I should probably downgrade this to a three since it's clearly not too memorable. So yeah. The next book I'm going to be talking about is One Day We'll All Be Dead and None of This Will Matter. This is a nonfiction basically about this Canadian Indian or Indian Canadian woman talking about her experiences being the child of immigrants. I can't remember if she was an immigrant herself, but basically the child of immigrants experience and her experiences as a woman of color and all of that stuff. I didn't rate this because I didn't love it enough to give it five stars and I'm not really super comfortable like rating nonfiction lower than five stars like I'm like if I didn't absolutely adore it to give it five stars then I'd rather not give it a rating at all but I still genuinely thought it was a really really good essay collection I liked how she talked about so many different things about what it's like to it, it's just <laughs> she talked about so 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 many things one of my favorite essays was one where she talked about this friendship where she was really close to this guy but she kind of saw him deteriorate and fall into alcoholism and how that friendship kind of like really messed her up because she really really liked this guy but she couldn't do anything to help him 
and so it was just kind of sad and and I don't know it just kind of spoke to me so I like that essay she also has an essay all about traditional Indian weddings and just Indian traditions and just like how much of tradition do you keep how much do you push back against how possible is it to encourage your family to embrace at least a little bit more change I buddy read this with Steph over at coffee over apples and as always with buddy reads with her I had a really really good time I'm glad I picked this up basically on a whim because almost always Steph is the one who has a set TBR and then I'm like ooh, we can read that one together <laughs> so I like that I picked this up on a whim and I would highly, highly recommend it. The next book I'm going to attempt to talk about is Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Steve Otter. Now listen, I'm terrible at talking about Maggie Steve Otter books that I loved. Like, it's just facts. It's just facts because it's like, how do I talk about why I loved this book so much or why I love this story so much? And especially with the Dreamer trilogy, it's like, I'm so deeply invested. Like Ronan Lynch is so much of my heart and soul that it's like, how, how do I even explain it to you? So, okay, what is this book about? <laughs> Essentially, it's a spinoff series of the Raven Cycle. And so we follow one of the characters from the Raven Cycle. He's a character who can take things out of his dreams. And so he's at this point in his life where he feels like he doesn't quite fit anywhere because his boyfriend is off to college, his friends are off basically traveling, I don't know if the US or the world, but they're basically taking a gap year where they just do whatever they want and Ronan is just kind of there not wanting to go to college not really sure what he wants to do with his life just kind of fucking around in his farm that he inherited and just trying to essentially his main focus is that this is a spoiler but he dreamt his brother and he's trying to figure out a way to keep his brother alive if anything were to happen to him because in this world dreamed people die or go to sleep they don't die they go to sleep when the person who dreamt them dies so he's trying to figure that shit out while at the same time being emo because he's aimless in life he doesn't have a purpose so that was a lot <laughs> and i don't know how to talk about this book i know i loved it i gave it five stars because i almost always give maggie's book especially her later stuff five stars so i fucking adored it it was really 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 good and this was the book that made me fall in love with declan lynch like like how did that happen like it's a fucking joke in the book itself like it's like declan lynch is like a generic white guy and yet i would risk it all for him <laughs> It's because, it's because the man just needs a break. Like, again, he he's the brother of a dreamer. So, like, a, the brother of someone who can take things out of their dreams. And the brother of a dream. So, the brother of someone who was dreamt into existence. So, it's like, the man is always working so hard to make sure that his brothers don't die. Don't do anything too chaotic that will put them at risk. And it's like, he, he just needs time to relax. He needs some death. Declan time you know <laughs> so that's kind of why I love him and because he's annoying and insufferable because he likes things to be very basic and chill just to avoid detection so I respect that <laughs> anyway I love him Matthew Lynch there's no there's not even any need to talk about him because it's just pure love like Matthew Lynch is precious when Matthew Lynch is suffering everyone else is suffering because no one wants Matthew Lynch to suffer you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying so <laughs> what else can I say about this book Jordan listen Jordan is an icon Hennessy is a mess Hennessy is just a mess but Jordan we love her 
we love her she's great she's fantastic jordan and declan incredible we love to see it i just mm, yes just yes so do i have anything else coherent to say about this book no <laughs> No, because I don't know how to talk about this series. So let's talk about another Maggie Seabotter book, the sequel of Call Down the Hawk, Mr. Impossible. This is another five-star read and another book I don't know how to talk about. Essentially, the only thing I know how to say is that this book melted my brain. It literally melted my brain. By the time I reached the last like 50 pages, I was like, the world is on fire. I am on fire. I don't know what's happening. What the fuck? <laughs> like that, that was it. That was the experience. And I know I've talked about it before, at least in another video, but literally the whole time it felt like I could see Maggie in my mind's eye <laughs> writing this book and being like, how can I fuck up my readers? How can I fuck with their brains and laugh while I'm doing it? I could see her. I could see her sitting at her desk or wherever the fuck she writes and just laughing her ass off. And I was like, wow, I can't believe you're doing this to me. <laughs> it was what a time, what a time. It was one of those books that after I finished it, I needed several hours to have a functioning brain again. Like I was just like going in loops, just thinking about it. And honestly, in a way, this is the book that kind of made me hate Ronan Lynch. And not like seriously, not like deeply, not like I wish Ronan Lynch any harm. It's more like if you don't get your act together, Ronan Lynch, I'm going to beat your ass. It's like that. I mean, obviously, Ronan Lynch would beat my ass, but that's not the point of my argument, okay? The point is that <sighs> that boy needs to get his act together. He just has to get his act together. Anyway, so yes. So any Ronan Lynch fans, listen, you don't have to come for me because I was a Ronan Lynch stan when I started the Raven Cycle series, okay? Ronan Lynch was my number one and he's still technically my precious boy, but precious boy needs to get his act together. Precious boy needs to talk to his boyfriend, okay? He needs to talk to Adam and stop fucking running away and hiding from Adam because Adam is too smart and would have fucking slapped him already and got him <laughs> to get his act together. But we're not here to talk about how Adam Parrish could have helped his boyfriend. And we're also not here to talk about how Adam Parrish needs his boyfriend to be functional to support him because Adam Parrish is falling into familiar patterns that are not the healthiest. Anyway, this was just a time. It was a blast. It was incredible. I melt. I died a little bit inside as I read it, but so, so fucking worth it. I need book three to know how all of this ends already. Also, Jordan and Farouk Lane and what was her name? Liliana? I think that's her name. The three of them. It's actually not Jordan. It's Hennessy. It's Hennessy. I confuse Jordan and Hennessy. If you've read the books, you know why, but obviously they're actually distinct. They just share a name. Both of them are called Jordan Hennessy. So again, that won't make sense to you if you haven't read the series, but I'm not going to explain it. The point is the three of them, mm, the sapphic energy is just off the charts, incredible, and I need it to be canon in the third book. That's all I'm saying. That's, that's all I'm saying. And yeah, that's actually the last book I'm going to be talking about in this video. Was I coherent at all? Not particularly so, but it doesn't surprise me. So yeah, that's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you would like to follow me on any of my social media, I will have the links to that down below in the description. But for now, see you next time.